All right, I'm trying out this new camera angle in my new writing area, which is over there on our little food tray. It's my laptop, my books, my grammar book, all that's over there. I've been switching things up. Okay, so hi, it's me. This is going to be like, I think the last part of part two of my last video. It was a really rough week, so in part two, you're still going to see me bitching and complaining a little bit, but I'm a little bit better now. Excuse the dog because she's eating. I'm in the living room, if you couldn't tell. Um, well, today is January 30th. It is like two more days, and then it's like February, or it's like one more day. Yeah, I think it's 31st. Yeah. yeah, it's like one more day, and then it's February. And then I was thinking, I was like, holy fudge, Abriana, hey, you can still salvage your quarter one goals. You can still, you can still salvage it. And I don't think I spoke to you guys about quarter one goals. I just think I talked to you guys about my goals in general. But taking that PTO day was so needed. I just needed time to reflect and do absolutely nothing. I did write, however, I did write a new scene in... I changed one of my characters' names. I changed Kashari to Jahari. I don't know why. Because I kept thinking of Jahari for some reason. And I was like, well, fuck. Let me just change it to Jahari real quick. Because I don't know why I keep thinking of this name. So I changed his name. And I wrote about 1,028 words for this new scene. Um, nothing too special. Just still part of an introductory. Um, but I did, re I did redo my Scrivener a little bit to help me get back into the... The writing feng shui of things and I decided what, what was helping me getting out of my little rut because I was tired I wanted to write but I had no motivation to write Nala seriously Nala 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 you were just smacking up a storm I don't know if y'all can hear it but man that's driving me crazy anyway <laughs> Anyway, um, so what I've been doing over the weekend has just been like, I've been trying to dive back into my old favorite books. I got like a palm of Storm and Silence and A Tale of Wraith, Wraiths and Ruins back there too, because I just absolutely love that book, so I'm rereading that. I'm going to make myself reread that. I don't even care. I just I just have to reread it. Um, and then I've watched some other author tubers just to get more inspo right because it's like wow you guys are writing books like abriana you can do this like you can write this book you can do this um and then i came across a author tuber jed he's more popular than me but i'll put his picture right here or in down below probably just right here because i always forget to put their stuff down below um and he was talking about uh how his the brandon sanderson class like the 14 hour brandon sanderson class he like comprised into like a 30 minute video and I was like that is just what I needed but I had my question what I realized I didn't I didn't have my plot set in stone I didn't have like an outline set in stone so long story short what we're gonna be doing this week is the nine step Brandon Sanderson method now I already have his example printed out I've rewatched the um his outlining video done by another author tuber um I remember to put his picture here I don't think he posts anymore like the last time I watched his video he posted like last year and that was it um but he did a really good like explanation of Brandon Sanderson's nine-step outlining method and I was like okay okay because like I have the gist I have what it what I want it to be I don't really necessarily have dude what up though like I have the the idea, the premise, maybe like an ele, maybe an elevator pitch at best. But I really couldn't tell you what each story arc is, like what each character is doing. Like I know I have like the overcoming the monster, the quest, and then the self discovery. But I still haven't like I never like actually did the work to actually figure out what these characters will be doing, the connections, the plot, the subplots, the other other subplots. And I'm like, this is what this is what we're gonna work on. And I think this will also help me just, you know, get back into writing just a little bit more. Um and I think that is I think that is it for now. Uh like I said, it's January thirtieth. Um so Q one will be over in April and well March. And then April Q two will start. Um
I'm just gonna say I would like to be. I know I can. Nala, Nala, yo, you see those cool kids every damn day. Dang. It, Nala, Nala. I'm gonna end this right now. Um, so yeah, I will see y'all a little bit later. not even lunch break i just walked out because i was just tired i'm tired um today is january the 25th a wednesday this is the beginning of part two of my self-learning a week of self-learning or self-studying i decided to split it up into part one and part two because last week was really hectic this week ain't no damn different and I just came out here to vent because I'm so frustrated. But yeah, no, that's that was just it. I'm just I'm just frustrated. And instead of like taking the time right now during my little break to actually do some self studying, I'm tired and I don't want to I don't want to do it. But I guess that's just the way life rolls. I never I didn't know how difficult it would be for me as an adult to be more disciplined. I used to be very self-disciplined when I was younger I didn't really need initiative to do anything I kind of just did it at least in my head I did it like if I wanted to do something I would stay up and I would do it if I wanted to learn something I would obsess I would obsess over it and do it I didn't need the help and the motivation now that I've gotten older having self-discipline is so hard for me I think the weird part about it when I was younger I lost a lot of friends over it because all my other friends we would go out and hang out and all that stuff i'm like no i gotta well at the time i wanted to be a professional dancer so i was like no i gotta study i gotta train i gotta hit the studio i gotta get these reps in i gotta get my ab game up you know what i'm saying so from the time i was in seventh grade all the way to i graduated high school my self-discipline was through the roof like i was taking myself out of school traveling two hours to go downtown to train take the train back to get picked up by my mom because I, I didn't like driving at night and all that stuff but I, I was just thinking about it when I was driving up here because I was so pissed at myself I'm like Adriana you have not done anything this week Monday I couldn't even tell you what happened actually yes Monday I went into the facility I don't normally go into the facility on Mondays but Monday because of my, my week was so shitty last week with work I had to make up for it this week so I had to go into the facility for an extra day see more people I'm halfway to my 14 hours I'm at like fuck, I'm at like 13 so I just need two more hours and then I can fucking go home and go to fucking sleep um and the crazy part is when I get home from work I'm not I'm, I'm still working I'm still helping you know, answer questions and all that stuff, being there supportive for my team and all that stuff. Um, the only thing is I'm very selfish for right now with just wanting to do nothing. And there is a thing about, you know, you feel bad when you're not actively pursuing something, you're not actively working on it. I actually recognize that that is a thing. And that's what I'm more upset about, how Monday, Tuesday went, today's Wednesday, probably won't do shit probably gonna work out and then I'm probably gonna go to sleep that's probably it. it's probably just gonna happen Thursday I might work out not work out Thursday I might write like I just the crazy part is I think I just want to be in the middle of my book I don't know I just feel like this weird angst towards it I don't know it's like I still love it I still have this uh, desire to want to do it but I want to be smack dab in the middle of this book and just start it already like this is already, this is already what I'm already done with I'm, I'm just in the trenches now like I'm not starting it and getting into the trenches um, the self learning has really made me like pause step back and try to work slower and also I really need to do it just so I enjoy the process of creating something like I feel like it should be fun but it's not really fun when I don't, I don't have enough it's not enough time in the day for me to make this activity fun does that make sense i feel like it doesn't make sense but hopefully it does so you guys know my work-life balance is terrible so when i do write there is like this 
pressure that I need to accomplish something, that it needs to be, you know, um, progressively moving towards something. I don't like to just like work on stuff and then not really progress to anything. Um, but I'm very impatient. I'm a very impatient person. I know I need to work on that. And I really want to work on doing this project real slow. I mean, I've been working on it for a whole fucking year. So, I mean, I've been taking my time, baby. I've been taking my time. I've been switching shit, pausing, regrouping and all that. So, I have been doing it. I just, it's bad. I just need to enjoy it more. And I would, I feel like I would enjoy it more if... I was working during my prime time like right now like 9 to 12 like during work work hours I feel as like my prime time creatively like when I'm sitting down sometimes if I'm talking to people I'm in session in the back of my mind I'm thinking of like my books and stuff I have my I still have my little notebook where I'm jotting down ideas and all that like still having a blast with that it's just when I get home yes I can work my way into a creative space however I don't really feel like it's natural I feel like and maybe I'll go back and look at my old videos but when I was working night shift and I did some work on my story I would sleep kind of like during the day but then I would still have that prime time to actually kind of like work on my story some I don't know if I documented that though I don't really think I did not, at least not that much but when I was working nights I would work on my stories sometimes, but really I would just game and enjoy my fucking free time. Like if they would sleep, like I, I gotta stay up doing something. So I play video games, I would chill. But I would still have, I would sleep for like my six hours, but then I'd be up and I would be working on like my book. Like I would be doing crafts and stuff, going on Pinterest, during like the prime time hours of the day and all that stuff. So I feel like that was my, for me, that was my time to work. Like I feel like when I'm here, right now working I'm only drained because I'm here because I don't want to be here but if I were to go home and go to my office I would be right awake working in enthused at least that's what I think but I really I really do feel that way if I could work night shifts again I think I honestly I think I honestly would like I'm, I'm getting tired of working it during the day like I want to focus on my stuff during the day like when I get home in the evening four or five six yes it can work I can write but I have that two hour limit because it's like, okay, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, bitch, you gotta go to sleep. You gotta get up for work in the morning. So it's like, you know, I can't really stay up and lavish in that. Um, I would kind of say the same thing for weekends too because I, I want weekends to be like family time where I'm not being selfish with my time because girl, I, I could definitely be selfish with my time. I just lock myself in my room all day and not talk to anybody. People will think I'm dead. Like, what's wrong with Abriana? I was like, I don't feel like talking to y'all. I just feel like staying in my world and self-isolating. That's what I want to do. But I don't know. This it's just it's been so hard for this self-learning. Like this week, I am. I'm, it did not go good. <laughs> it did not go good. And. Mm, mm, mm. But it's the middle of the week. Maybe. Thursday and Friday, I can pull myself up by my bootstraps and I can do something. Hopefully, I can. I think I already told y'all the day is January 25th. So, Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday was shit. That shit didn't happen. Wednesday, shit probably not gonna happen. Probably gonna work out. I have been consistent with my working out. When I work out, I feel better. I am more energized. But by the time I'm done working out, it's like damn near like 9.30. <laughs> and then I take a nice long ass shower and then it's like 10. <laughs> And so then I'm like, well, fuck, it's going to be 11 o'clock, like, right around the corner, so I need to go to bed. It's, there's just not enough time in the day for what I want to do. And I feel like I'm venting just a bit. I just make it, I just give myself problems. No, I'm not. Life is hard. Life is fucking hard, bro. Life is fucking hard, man. You know what? I think I might look at other people's author two videos to see how they balance their work and then their writing. Only because... I get very mad. Like, I'm an angry... I'm a Gemini. I get very angry. I'm a very angry person. Actually, I'm very angry. Um, so, I, I'm frustrated because I can't work my... I can't have my perfect day how I want it. Have it. It pushes me off. Um, I want to know, how do y'all deal with that? Especially with working. Y'all have kids and, like, you know... It's like, I really want to write and do this. and 
but I just can't. And then there's the sacrifices, and the bitch tired of fucking sacrifices and time like that. Damn, like, ugh. Like, ugh. This shit just kind of is over. Sometimes the feeling I get when writing and sometimes the sacrifices that you have to make that I didn't even, I'm not even making really big ass sacrifices like that, but sometimes it feels like that. And it just be, it be over fucking rated sometimes. I'd be like, fuck this shit. Like, I'm over, I'm over it. I'm over it. It's overrated. Um, but I think I'm done venting. Let me get back to work because I still gotta see like seven more fucking people. So that was it. Goodbye for this part two of a failure of the self, of the starting of this self study. Blech. Uh, uh. But on the plus side, my nails look bomb. That was it. Hey guys, it's me. Um, it's the same day from now we're in the present. So January 30th, Monday. Yeah, it's the same day as the previous clip. Um, but I wanted to touch base with you guys on what I accomplished today. So out of the nine step, well, out of the Brandon Sanderson's nine-step outlining method. I think I said this right. Oh my gosh. I got hiccups. Um, I was able to finish two of the nine steps. So I have completely finished the overview of the first book in the series. And, um, and then I finished the setting, which is kind of like an encyclopedia of how he explained it in the video. And then also how it was in the example, like it was like setting, but then different places and then different societies and all that stuff like a lot of bullet points all of his stuff had like two or three paragraphs and I tried I am mimicking his shit to the T because it's Brandon Sanderson so at, at worst it might not work for me but it's successful for him so you mean what's the worst like what's the worst that can happen it I might actually have to be good at it or something so anyway um so I'm matching his shit to a T it was very hard for me to get the paragraphs, the two, three paragraphs for some of my stuff. At most, um, I know when I was talking about like the demented for the settings, just for like their under human society, I have like maybe four sentences, a very small paragraph, but for the other things that I was able to do, like the, um, what did I put? I put the two, I put the institution, I put the Sister Isles, which is kind of like the, another location in the book that is talked about, but it's not, you're not going to see until like book two, but like all of the places and settings and schools and shit and, and, um, and, um, um, what, what was the other one? What was the other one? Damn it. Damn, I forget. But anyway, I got done with that today. That's that's the nutshell. So what I'm gonna be working on tomorrow would be the um, world building tidbits, which is the world art, like how it kind of looks, how you can visualize it, and then the and then the other bullet point was society, which is different from the human society. Um, it's not as detailed, like for the human society part, I broke up into the three different branches that I now have. I didn't know I was going to have three branches of like human society, but once I dove more into it and I took the time to think about it, I was like, oh, it's more than two points of views. It's like three people. It's like the people who are already here, the people who are forced to be here and the people who are just wanting to take over for like power and shits and giggles and all that stuff. So I did all that. Um... So for tomorrow's uh, outline and stuff, I'll be kind of interesting. I didn't read the, I, I read for the, um, the world building, like the art stuff, um, but I didn't read for the society, which is different, again, from the human society. So I'm excited for that part. Then Brandon Sanderson's uh, sections for those were short, so I imagine mine will be short. <laughs> Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, and then he goes into his characters. So he goes into his main, his side, and then his minors. I have about 20 characters that I can think of off the dome. Three would be my main. Um, the other fucking 10 are side characters that I'll probably have like a paragraph or two about. Because one of the side characters, damn near, should probably be a main character. 
Oh, I thought the dog got out the cage. Sorry. Um, it's night here. Obviously, I'm in my pajamas. I just, I just had to get this to y'all real quick. Um, oh wait, I think I'm covering the microphone. Oops. But that's really that on that. Um, and how I set, how I have it setting up in my Scrivener is similar to how he has his format set up in his. Google Docs with not Google Docs like but in Word with the heading and all that stuff I actually have four going on five pages of that so I'm like oh, okay look at me getting some stuff in um, but this has been a really good exercise this far just making me think a little bit more about some certain things and now I have a place to put it aside from my PowerPoint which believe you me I'm still doing that um but that's going to be probably more for visual references because I have a lot of like animal life and the clothing and stuff, stuff like that. So instead of keeping that in my Scrivener file, I am going to put it in my PowerPoint, which I'm going to transfer over to like a big old binder so it can be like my official series Bible. Yeah. So anyway, that's it. I will touch bases with y'all again real soon, a little bit later on this week hey it's me uh, I'm going to give y'all an update on how writing went um, tonight so today is Tuesday the 31st because <laughs> yesterday was Monday um, I'm refilming this I filmed this twice well, this is my second time filming this for some reason I could not hear the audio when I was talking and I spent like 17 minutes explaining what the hell happened during this writing session and my epiphanies and all that stuff and like my progress and I could barely hear myself also I broke my tripod so I have to hold my phone the entire time it's the problem of having a big phone like I cannot wait to downsize to a smaller phone because it's just the issues but um it's going on nine o'clock so I've been writing since about 6 30 um so i'm getting ready to call it a night thus why i am filming so let me tell you about what i did so i added three more locations to the settings for the settings part in the outlining i added adonia's a family store which is also slash their home i thought that was important because that's a place where we'll meet adonia and her family that's where she's going to spend some of her time and i was like mm, you should probably put that in there and explain the situation at hand so i did that then i added the boarding home in which jahari and his family live in which is in no man's land again another place where he would interact with his family or if not he'll like be there by himself and stuff like that so I was like well let me describe how this is the atmosphere all that stuff then I added the Sereno estate which is where the nobility or the cultured people that's terming them right now um stay in um Ad Adamar um, so that's where they are at and then I just kind of described you know that the no nobility stay there That's where the Institute is where that's another important part that I think I mentioned in the previous video The Institute is in that area. So just trying to connect the dots So then after I was finishing adding that I worked on the world building tidbits. So For the world building. I didn't go too much into bait. Well, too much detail brandon sanderson only had about like a paragraph at most of for his world but, oh jesus autumn you scared the shit <laughs> was not expecting that um brandon sanderson only had about like you know a paragraph or so describing the artwork of the city so i did a similar thing i just used like bullet points i was like i want the colors to be um Senegal colors with a mixture of like you know like Wakanda urbanness but not girl are you trying girl I'm not about to hold you can you not see I'm holding the camera no 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 stay right there stay right there um Wakanda like rural a modern city but not with tech not that technical you know there's still like dirt roads there's still like dirt paved buildings but it's like clay material it's colorful all that jazz did bullet points so that's how i am describing the art of the 
world in the world building for the tidbit so that only took about two seconds so then came the long laborious part of doing the main characters so brandon sanderson had about four paragraphs for his main characters and i did the exact goddamn same thing and i think i did good what i will say tripped me up is he talked about his character dreams and for some reason i don't know why i was just like character dreams is that not their goal but then in another sentence it was like the goal of this character is blah 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 but their dream is this and i was like those are two different things what the fuck so for me i was just associating the characters with having a dream and then not a dream having a goal for the story and then that's it whether they meet their goal was all I was thinking about. I wasn't thinking about making them like, not, not Nala, Autumn, stop, please. Just stand over there. Ugh. My cat is just trying to, hold on, come here. Okay, you, is that better? Will you sit down now? Are you okay? Yeah, put your tail down, you're doing too much. Okay, well don't, I don't care. Just doing too much. Anyway, um, Damn, just distracted me from my train of thought. Um, ba -da 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 -da, something about character goals and dreams. Anyway, yeah, there, there were two different things. And for me, I was just focusing on the character goal. Like, did they accomplish it by the end of the book? Yay or nay? Um, and with the dream being thrown in there, that also made it a little bit more personable. Like, oh, this is a person. So it took me some time to think about each of my character's dreams for themselves separate from their story goals and I was able to do that I was also able to add in the storyline storyline B for Jahari but not for Zadia or Adonaya but I was able to kind of start working on their the plot of their story arc story structure kind of um I'm not gonna get into that I don't think it's probably like the weekend because the next section that I'm doing in the outlining process is the secondary characters and the minor characters and then we go into plot so that's where I'm probably going to talk to you guys more about that but with writing out those details just who the characters were I was able to figure out their dreams their personal dreams that they had from themselves separate from their goals that they wanted for their family or by the end of the book and I felt like I was able to make them a little bit more personable I know for Zadia's arc I am really happy with because she's a character that I know is going to be a 360 her dream for herself is one thing but through the story and the exposure that she's gonna get she's gonna see that oh this kind of isn't their fault like all this ideology i thought about them really isn't right but it was like i've been told this my whole life now i don't know what to believe type of thing so i'm really excited for her because i know she's going to have a 360 but i did write down that she's going to make a lot of mistakes because you know it's really hard being a human as we all are watching this video um when you're taught something retraining yourself can be difficult it takes repetition it takes an opening of one's mind to you know see other people's point of view and you know yours may not necessarily be correct right um and so when she, she has that moment where she's like oh i guess what i was learning was wrong but and it was really from her parents you know as well they were doing what they thought was best for her and you know she instilled that you know in herself that's been instilled in her so now she's by the end of the book she will be have learned otherwise so really her dream will conflict not with her goal but just her character development and i like that um kashari's dream will not conflict with his goal but it does conflict with his interpersonal skills because like you know like he's kind of awkward and all that stuff um and then uh adonaya's dream for herself is you know more self independence to be able to believe herself you know all that good stuff um 
but it contrasts with her personality. I, I really went into detail with the character personalities. I kind of want to explain it, but I kind of don't want to because I spent 17 minutes talking about it in the last video. And I'm tired. I really don't want to. Um, but what I will do, I will definitely come back and will explain it more when I get into the plot section of the outlining method, which I know is going to be a bunch, a bunch of shit and going to be real long. Um, but yeah, I was able to just finish everybody's like main character section. Each got four paragraphs. Really proud of myself. Was able to determine some things left some tidbits for what I want to be their storyline be because in my head I want my characters to have three storylines the one storyline will be their main goal the second storyline is the dream they have for themselves and then the third like C storyline will be something that carries over into the second book and one thing that I liked about the Brandon Sanderson video that I did see was like he was like, you can have multiple storylines. I mean, you'll have your main one, but you can have multiple different storylines. And I was like, I like that. So I think three can be a healthy balance because one, the first one is the main goal. The second one is the dream they have for themselves. And then the third is like something minor, but that will become, you know, something major in the second book. I kind of have to plan that out a little bit more. That's just what I was thinking for myself. Um, the dog is sleeping and the cat is trying to eat my hair. Um, but that is it. So I'm going to wrap it. Girl, what? Don't be grabbing me like you know me like that. Because I do not know you. Anyway. Um, you are a weirdo. <laughs> Can't you weirdo? Uh, Autumn, what's with you? You want my hair? I know it's great. Oh, damn. Girl, calm down. Okay, anyway. Um, so yeah, that's what I did today. Tomorrow I will be working on my secondary characters and my minor characters. From the examples that Brandon Sanderson had, he had, I think, maybe like five or six secondary characters and like three minor characters. So how I haven't read into detail what he describes as his secondary characters. From what I said previously, I have a bunch of secondary minor characters, but I think when I go through them, I won't have as many as I think I have. Um, I know I'll have probably maybe a similar amount of five or six secondary characters because one of my secondary one of my secondary secondary characters, you know, can low be, can low key be the storyline C for all of the characters. But I just gotta make it all you know kind of flow together with function. What the, are you looking at like that? Like, why are you looking at my hair like that? Weirdo. Anyway. Um, so, that's what I'll be doing tomorrow. So, I will update y'all about that when the time comes. So, okay. Bye. Okay. Ever since I broke my tripod, trying to, <laughs> trying to film has been rough. Um, excuse the noise if you hear noise because the cat's. Or on that catnip so they act a little crazy and then <laughs> Nala is over there eating um but today is I was gonna say January today is February 2nd um Thursday yeah cuz I got honest today <laughs> today is February 2nd a Thursday we all stop damn um we're here whack-a-mole looking cat what the hell is wrong with y'all oh anyway um back to writing well what, what am I gonna do today um so today uh I am starting to write the minor characters for my book um the well secondary characters probably and then maybe a few minor characters I'm not too pressed about that the only thing that I was thinking about yesterday I didn't write yesterday I just worked out um and ate and then watched tv that's all I did we all need that every now and then um but that gave me time to think about the problem that I think I'm just putting myself in because that's what I do. Um, I was thinking about the location of the capital city and in my head it's in the center area of Yubala. Um, but, but then I was like, wait a minute, what's keeping them from like 
leaving and like, you know, just hopping, <laughs> hopping state lines really. And then I was like, oh, maybe I can put like a big old ass wall or fence. Like maybe, <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, what is actually preventing the residents from going over to the different areas? And I think I might, um, I think I might make those areas kind of like districts. I don't know. I was just really thinking about that because I was like, wait, why can't they just fucking pack up their shit and leave? Like, I know the manifestors can't, but what's really stopping the the true born citizen from doing that? Um, and I didn't really give a concrete reason of why. I know why the manifestors are there. They're all being held there. That's why the city's being overpopulated and the registration's allowing true born families to leave but it's very kind of restrictive it's like every six months only three families are allowed um i think i need to do something a little bit more than that like it probably has to be like a structure within the city or something or like a system within the city where they probably need to keep a certain amount of residents you know to like i don't know to do something because i really feel like because there's more true born residents than there are well not of the manifestors, but of like the the nobility, like the the cultured ones, like the like the the ten overseeing, not overseeing, but like the ten richest families in the city right now, which kind of control like the whole continent and all that stuff. Um, they kind of they're outnumbered, so I'm like, what's a good way to have? I, I feel like I have to come more. I have to I have to come up with a more concrete system of why they really can't just up and leave probably just make more rules and regis reg legislations i was gonna say legislations legislations make more rules and legislations um so it feels more real and it's just like oh they can just up and leave because if i'm thinking why don't they just up and leave readers will think why they're why won't they just up and leave too so that was something that i was thinking about all day yesterday i don't have to tackle that until later on this weekend um because i'm just going to focus on the minor the secondary characters and the minor characters and then it's going to go into the plot um and i know the plot is going to probably be like a full two-day thing probably all saturday and sunday if i play my cards right which i think i am but play my card right all saturday and sunday i will be able to just think about and plot out and make their arcs like line up together um I was using the plotter to like, you know, to visibly see where everything is going. Um, so I'll, I'll just tweak the ones that I have. Um, I think, yeah, I'll just tweak. I'll just tweak the ones that I have a little bit. Um, Cause I do have some chapters already like preset, but I'm like, mm, now that I'm starting it in a whole different way now, it's, it's not two Zadia chapters in, Kashari then Adonaya it's like it's gonna be one one and one and then one one and one I'm, try I'm trying to do it that way um but if I, if I had to do two chapters side by side I guess I will hi Nala Ooh, you got sleep in your eye you need to clean that shit up oh my god rocks have like the worst eye boogers in the world but anyway so that's what I'm gonna be working on today I just wanted to let y'all know that um and I'm gonna get in touch with y'all again later on once I have tackled the plotting, and we'll just see how I am when I'm done with the plotting. Okay, we'll just see. Um, do I want to end this on Friday? Yeah, I probably do want to end this on Friday, and I'll just do another video on Saturday. Something like that. All right. Anyway. Ooh, don't you guys hate it when you have to finish out a vlog? So, it is Sunday, February 5th. I wanted to touch bases with y'all because I'm going to end this vlog because I've done some writing. Um, I've actually finished all of the world building aspects with the characters and all that stuff. Um, I have the storyline B characters for both Jahari and Adonaya now. I know those two characters they'll be interacting with. I still don't know the one for Zadia, but I'll figure that one out later. Um, now I'm moving on to the plot. My dog and my cat are both. Yo! I need y'all to stop real soon. There we go. Sorry. The dog and the cat are in the room. The husband's talking. I'm trying to end this vlog while there's still light out because it's supposed to be like a, a forecast. It's like cloudy. So I'm like, Ugh, I need it to be like, you know, somewhat nice so they can see me. Um, anyway, so I ended up finishing that. My world is getting a little bit more bigger. I started adding some 
well I added a new not a new family but like a side family that's going to be like the altar family to Adonaya Adonaya's family of my 10 like first families um uh the Manlas are going to be against the Aduno family if I pronounce that right but I'll be figuring that out so I ended up adding that it was real fun um I didn't know if I was gonna do that but I did and I have good reasons why the side character for Adonaya's storyline B I feel like she's really interesting I'm not gonna make her a main character but she I think she's very interesting because she's everything Adonaya is not so you know um I know we're gonna have more minor characters I know especially for Jahari his task for the Demented is gonna be something to do with a minor character that I've yet to have the name to figure out yet but I know that's gonna happen today's plan will be to just start the plotting uh I watched a bit of Brandon Sanderson's video on his plotting with his Venn diagram with the setting the characters and then the conflict is in the middle so like the two circles and then in the middle of the conflict it has to be the combination of both so that's what I'm going to be working on today um that plotting and then story type story structure i know those are like different bullet points in the his nine outline his nine point like outlining method thing um so that's where i'm on now and then i'll low-key high-key kind of be finished with it but um i know it's going to take me at least a full day in tomorrow to get done with everything that i have in my head because i was brainstorming some other stuff that I know I want to add into this series, which I know what it's going to be called, but I have to wait because I have to make sure no one else is calling their series this, but they probably already have, but I strictly got my like series name from, I don't know if y'all remember Dogs, but <laughs> I had these two dogs named Chaos and Mayhem, so that those titles are going to be like in the series maze, in the series name, so anyway, that is it. So yeah, this was the part two second week of the self-learning you doing this all or teaching myself all this i've definitely fallen off of the creative writing worksheet but i know if i have any questions like with verbiage and how to sh how to structure my sentences i've been using my um the one and only grammar book that you'll ever need by i i forget but i've been using it um especially when it comes to my past and present like nouns and predicates and all this other stuff i'm like oh i don't remember none of this but it's good that i had this on my person i even take take it to me at take it with me to work so i can like look at it like during my break sometimes um but yeah so that's how the first well the part two of self-learning went uh tell me if you like it um and that's it i will see y'all back in another video real soon